Hey there, Willowbrook, and thanks so much for doing our deep dive. Today, we are in Exodus chapter 1, and we're going to start in verse 15. I love that we are in a new book. Um, I love Genesis, but I love Exodus um, because Exodus is full of some of the same drama that we saw in Genesis, but it also is this beautiful story unfolding of God keeping his promises. God made promises to Abraham to make him into a great nation, and the book of Exodus begins to unfold that for us. And so I love it because we get to see um, God's character. We get to see some of the same drama um, to know that, hey, it's not all smooth sailing. It really does involve uh, trusting and believing that God will do what he said he would do, that he is a trustworthy God. And it is a beautiful story and a reminder to us as we walk with God that he is faithful to keep his promises, even if it looks like we're not headed that way. And that's what happens today as we get in verse 15, because we know that God has promised Abraham that he would make him into a great nation. And the people, the descendants of Abraham have now found themselves in Egypt and the king wants to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. Well, that's not promising for becoming a nation if um, there's a plan for you to become extinct. And the king of Egypt has met with Hebrew midwives and told them that as a Hebrew woman is delivering a baby, when they deliver the baby, if the baby is a boy, they are to kill the baby. This is the plan. We're going to get rid of all of these people um, that are descendants of Abraham. They're not actually a nation yet. They're just a big group of people, and the king of Egypt wants to get rid of them. But what I find in verse 17, I think has so much application for us today as followers of Jesus. Um, and this is what it says. It says in verse 17 that the midwives, the one that the king had said, hey, kill the boys, it says in verse 17, the midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let the boys live. Oh, I love that because there was obviously pressure. I mean, this is the king of Egypt. He He's powerful. Um, he has the ability to, if he, he's demanding that they kill babies. He can kill them. It's not that big of a problem, but it says that they feared God. They feared God more than they feared the king of Egypt. And I think we have to stop right now and do a little reflection about who we fear more than we fear God. And I mean that in the sense of what place does God have in your life? Is he the most important thing? And do you see yourself first as a follower of Jesus or first as a citizen of this nation or at, in your family role? Do you see yourself first as a mom or a dad or a spouse or, or, or even in your career? Do you see yourself first as a teacher or an engineer or whatever it is that what label you could put yourself in any of those can be things that we fear that we elevate those roles above our identity in Christ Paul talked to do the Galatian people in the New Testament who were struggling with the same thing. They, they were looking for the approval of men. And he tells them in Galatians 1.10, he says, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? Check this out. He says, if I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. Do you see yourself first and foremost, as a servant of Christ? Or are you a servant to the approval of others? Listen, we live in a time, in fact, I had a conversation just this week with a woman who was really struggling because in her career, she was being asked to do some things that she felt went opposed 
to the truth and the standard of God. She was having to make a, a choice. Do I fear God or do I fear man? The, the approval of people at work and what people will think of me and Google reviews. What it, We live in a time where you need to know whose approval you're after. No, see, as a follower of Jesus, you actually have the approval of God on you. It, it's Jesus's righteousness on you. But are you seeking the approval of man? Or are you resting in the approval of God and looking to please him with your life because you are first and foremost a servant of Christ? Hey, this is a good question. This is an age old question that happened even in the time before Israel was a nation. Women were having to make a decision. Are they going to fear God or are they going to fear man? Willowbrook, you have a decision. Even today, as you carry out whatever it is that you're doing, as you go about your day, are you carrying yourself as a follower of Jesus or are you carrying yourself in some other label or role? If you're not first and foremost carrying yourself within your identity in Christ, then I'm telling you that you are worshiping, you are fearing something else more than you're fearing God. It says you can't be a servant of Christ and do that. Oh, what freedom there is to rest in the approval of God and not pursue the, the approval of man. We see it here and we have the opportunity to do it in our own lives as well. Hey, I'm praying for you. I'm walking. I'm, I'm, I'm turning and surrendering things over to God. On the regular um, because this is an ongoing struggle for us we have lots of responsibilities and we have things um, that God's entrusted us with but first and foremost he wants us to belong to him and to trust him and and to let him do the work of defending himself and defending us and he he's trustworthy to do that just as he's keeping his promises and we'll see that in the book of Exodus he's keeping his promises to you too oh well I love you and I hope that you'll have a happy Wednesday.